Hello, and uh, so thank you for coming to this very short session about, uh, about how to run neural networks efficiently. Um, I, uh, I work for Google. My name is, my name is Martin. Uh, I'm, people mostly know me for uh, uh, this uh, series of videos, educational videos about machine learning. And uh, to make those videos, I also build a lot of neural networks. And uh, neural networks are hard. They train for ages. Uh, they fail after three days of training. And, and uh, if, you, um, uh, if on top of your data problems and modeling problems, you have tooling problems, uh, life is, is not nice at all. So it took me a while to come up with uh, the ideal tooling. Uh, I use uh, Google Cloud Platform. And I want to show you uh, the, the setup I use, which I find quite efficient. So I use, uh, of course, TensorFlow. Uh, I use ML Engine, which is uh, the, the tool that uh, Google, Google's cloud provides for training neural networks and also serving neural networks in production. And uh, TensorBoard for visualizations. Um, but first, what do I do with them? So here is uh, one model that uh, I've been working on for a while. Uh, here, so th this is the application. It's, it's just a map, and you can uh, you can scroll around, and uh, and then the model that I was building is a model that recognizes airplanes. So it's scanning the image and it's spotting all of these airplanes there. Um, it sounds fairly. I mean, it, it's mi it's a middle of the road as models go. It's 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 not a toy model. It's not one of those super complex models that trains for weeks, it's somewhat middle of the road. Um, the, the tool I'm using is, uh, so as, as I said, the tool I'm using, so this is the application. And that's just JavaScript, HTML, that has nothing to do with the tooling that I want to talk to you about. That's what I'm building. This is ML Engine. So what I like in ML Engine is that the view I see is not virtual machines or some infrastructure thing that I don't understand, but my training jobs with their completion, with their logs. How do I launch a job? It's, uh, my job is written in, uh, in Python. It's straight uh, TensorFlow code in Python. Uh, to launch it, I have a command line which basically says uh, gcloud ml engine jobs submit. I launch it, and uh, the, the job goes off on ml engine. The nice thing, uh, really something that is, is not necessarily uh, hard technically, but practically speaking, I love it. I have a second idea for a different combination of hyperparameters. Let's say drop out 0 0.5. Boom, I launch a second job. Uh, I have a third idea. Uh, maybe the learning rate is a bit off. Let's try to half this learning rate. Boom, I launch another job. And um, let's try yet another dropout, and, and, and off I go. And here in the interface, I see my running jobs. So it's, uh, it's just something that I find very practical. The, these jobs will provision their own machines, depending on the configuration I asked for. It's a machine with just a CPU, it's a machine with a GPU, or it's a cluster of 100 machines with eight GPUs each. Uh, this is just a config file. Um, and so these machines will also die when the training job is finished, which is super important to me because I can't ever remember to shut down my machines. Uh, what else do you see? You can see the logs here coming from those machines. So this one is, uh, is waiting for the job to be provisioned, so it's waiting for the ma machine to spin up. In a couple of seconds, it will start uh, running. And as these jobs execute, they write, uh, you can see the textual logs here, but they also write their um, uh, training data, uh, loss data, accuracy data, whatever else you defined in your model as metrics that you care about. They write them into uh, a specific log file that you can visualize. The tool that is used for visualizing, yeah, my, uh, my training has just started here. Uh, the tool that uh, you use for visualizing those, uh, those metrics is called TensorBoard. 
Again, how do you launch? TensorBoard comes with TensorFlow. When you install TensorFlow, you have TensorBoard. It's part of the installation. Uh, you launch TensorBoard uh, on the command line by saying TensorBoard and specifying, if you're too far away, don't worry, but you just specify the folder in which those events files have been written by TensorFlow. And this can be a folder in the cloud that works perfectly. I can monitor a job that is running on ML Engine from my machine here. So what are the things that I can see? For instance, here, I was building my, my <clears throat> so this is my accuracy, this is my loss. I was building my uh, airplane model. And then as I was improving my model, I can visualize the different accuracy curves. So this was slightly better, even better, even better. Yeah, and this one is fantastic. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, more interesting you have an image visualization as well in TensorBoard. So here in my code, I'm outputting images, and well, I, I am writing the, the squares on the, in the images, OK? Uh, yellow is the ground truth, and, and the white squares is what, I detect, what the model detected. What else can we see here? Oh, this. A simple loss curve, but computed on training data in red, and in, on test data in blue. And you see that they are diverging. That's bad. That's called overfitting. When you see this, and it's very important to, to see it, uh, there are various way of, of ways of fixing it. Once, once you apply those regularization techniques, this is what things should look like. Not diverging anymore. And uh, maybe a last one. I like this one. Uh, who has used a, a regularization technique called batch normalization before? Show of hands, batch norm? Yeah, a couple of people. Um, batch norm is, uh, is, is you know, it's, it's powerful, but for most people, it's some kind of magical trick that makes things work. Here we can see what batch norm actually does. This is a histogram distribution of activations coming from a neural network layer. Uh, so this is, uh, for, uh, this is a neural network layer that, after this, will use uh, the sigmoid activation function. And you see it, it's a bit off. Most of the neurons are either outputting 0 or 1. And in the middle, you, you barely have any signal. So this happens very often in neural networks, and this is what batch normalization fixes. When you apply batch normalization, this is the output you get from your neuron activations. Much nicer. Nice, nice Gaussian bell curve. Uh, not centered on 0. Okay, That will be killing the signal. It's, uh, it's centered or on, well, not 0 0.5, because Gaussian, uh, sorry, sigmoid is from one, uh, 0 to 1. Uh, the, 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 the median here is still interesting signal, but now your neurons are firing in a region that is the useful region of your activation curve, and that's why uh, your model trains a lot better. So this is also something you can see in TensorBoard. And once you have finished training, so my jobs here are still running. Let's see this one. What does he say? And the blah, blah, blah. It's actually, it's, it's even, uh, this one has finished already. Uh, the other thing you can do with ML Engine is deploy a model in production. So the second feature here is models. And I have this MNIST model that is created, but I can create a new version of it. Let's call this VQCon. And the only thing I have to do is to point it to a saved model which is something that TensorFlow saves at the end of, uh, at the end of, uh, of, of training. Uh, and it's right here in digits, export, MNIST model, and here are my, cell, my saved models. So I guess this one is, is a good one. I do select, create. This takes a couple of minutes, so you will, you will not see the result immediately. But this model at the, at the outset will be deployed behind uh, a fully managed REST API fully managed, fully auto-scaled, so there is nothing you have to worry about. Just call the REST API with, in, in my case, the tiles of aerial imagery, 
and outcome predictions. That's how I built this application. This application is pure JavaScript, but it's cutting up this image into tiles of 256 by 256, shipping them off to my REST API on ML Engine, and returning the, the boxes for the planes. And a last feature is that ML Engine also has a hyperparameter tuning module. So uh, the, lots of code here. That's just the command line I run for uh, shipping uh, my, my training to ML Engine. And usually, this is the configuration file I use, uh, just scale tier basic GPU. That means one machine with a GPU. But you can add all of these additional parameters, which will tell ML Engine to run a hyperparam tuning job to saying, I want to maximize my accuracy by trying values of this parameter between these bounds and this parameter between those bounds. And it runs a hyperparameter tuning jobs. It tries to find the, the, the best combination of parameters in quite a clever way. It's using Bayesian inference in the background to, uh, to run the, the minimal amount of, of, of trials uh, to figure out the best parameters for your job. That's it. That's what I wanted to share with you. TensorFlow, ML Engine, TensorBoard, and I'm quite productive with those. Thank you.